The title is, is What Social Value Means in Construction. So my first thought was to go back to the Romans um, and the development of all those roads, aqueducts and viaducts throughout the, the known world. And I thought, well, no, let's become more UK orientated and talk about Isambar Kingdom, Brunel and Smeaton and Basiljet. And I thought, no, let's go to 1971. That's a far better way to do it. Um, in 1971, actually, I, I personally was a neat, showing my age. Um, I came back from the family home in Indonesia, in Java, to stay with my grandparents in a sleepy little town called Clevedon, next to the sea here. I was not in employment, education, or training. I was forced to have a gap year, and um, my grandparents weren't very pleased about me being free um, letting there. So, it just so happened that John Lang Construction were building the M5 motorway alongside there. And so I went along to the cabins and said, uh, as you did in the 1970s, get a job. Um, and I was taken on as a chain boy to the structures agent. And for the next year, we built seven underpasses, over bridges, and a five mile stretch along there. There are at least 20 or 30 other um, young people there who were brought in off the streets of Clevedon. Um, they're all the subcontractors, the canteen staff, so many local suppliers and subcontractors that immediately there was a, a, a real social value of that whole project. Um, I then moved on and, and uh, was lucky enough to get to the University of Leeds. And for the next three years, I worked with George Wimpy Construction as a labourer, along with 20 or 30 other students, um, on some affordable housing projects. And for three years, every holiday, we didn't sign up to the Dole. We actually went out there, we earned some money, and we actually produced some lovely social housing for the, for the city. I mention these because, A, there was an impact immediately on the people around those construction projects. But the legacy from that is incredible. Today, the M5 motorway, thank goodness all the structures are still standing, um, is, is a gateway for tourism, for trade, for, 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 for activity down in the southwest. Um, affordable homes in Leeds, there's still a lot of people there who need social housing in Leeds. So there's a big picture out there, as, as Hazel said. So I, I'm passionate that, that uh, construction does do that from personal experience. Um, Melanie has some, some figures here which are slightly bigger than mine, which is even better. Um, UK Contractors Group produced a whole lot of data. Many of you will be aware of this, about what construction does in terms of economic value. Um, Melanie had 2.9 million. That's even better than 2.2 million employees. Uh, but I think some of the salient points are that of the 350 firms um, operating construction, uh, a lot of them are SMEs. And we all know the figure of one pound invested in construction equals two pound 84 um, of economic value in, through the supply chain, through employment, etc. But more importantly, in terms of social value, 95p in every pound remains local. And that goes back to my point about 1971. So um, when it comes to Kia, we, we are aware of what, what we do uh, in terms of we turn over three billion pounds last year. 1.3 billion was basically paying taxes, um, paying interest rates, uh, dividends to shareholders, but actually we employed 15,000 people. Over 600 million pounds went into employing 15,000 people. Most importantly, 2.3 billion of that 3 billion turnover was actually delivering hospitals, schools, roads, crossrail, um, uh, major societal projects. And in so doing, they actually produced um, uh, another 15,000 employees who are uh, subcontractors. Of, the, the, uh, of all the subcontractors, we use 70% are SMEs. So there's a, there's a, there's a massive tangible way of, 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 uh, of converting our 3 billion into what, what did you do with that 3 billion? So the social value came along, January 2013. The uh, number of PQQs and bids escalated in terms of the coverage for what was required from these different projects. And one year on, uh, the Cabinet Office came out with one year on, with a little review about how um, Hazel and her team, how, how far it had gone into the system, as it were. And interesting reading, because some of the things that Hazel's talked about is that th there has been that early uncertainty, and we find going across various different uh, public sectors, whether it's local authorities or central government, 
there's a lot of uncertainty about what you can and cannot do. And also, it's, us providers find it very difficult to actually demonstrate what that added value means. Uh, particularly in, in, in pounds, shillings and pence. It's quite easy to demonstrate in terms of the number of apprentices, etc. But also, interestingly, um, there was a determination that there should not be any prescriptive guidance from Whitehall, which relieved us an awful lot, because prescription is not good if you want to be able to, 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 to work individually and customise your work with, with, with uh, different organisations. But when Lord Young started his review, uh, business in the community got together 20 people to sit round the table with two cabinet officers um, and to discuss what was our perception of that. So this was almost uh, two years on. And of those 20 people who were around the table, it's amazing because 10 of them, 50%, were from construction. And what we were really trying to work out from this, it, it, it was apples and pears. All of us had the same idea. Well, what does consider mean? What does the local authority, when it says you must consider social, environmental, economic value, every client we went to had a different perception of what does consider mean. And we couldn't go back and challenge them because how do you challenge consider? It's a legal nightmare with that. And we also asked, you know, how do you measure it? Going back to your point, how do you measure it? Because all of us around that table, and we all work hard on this, uh, with Carillion, Interserve, and, and Skanska, Morgan Sindel, but we also have different areas of how do we measure this. So it was a real challenge for us. So, um, it, and this is, this is all replicated in our PQQs and bids. And I went to ask a few of our leading bid managers what they thought the impact of, of the uh, Social Value Act was. And clearly, social value came more and more into the demand of what our response should be. Um, but also, it's becoming more prevalent that the question surrounded social regeneration in the broader sense. And whereas we were previously asked to provide a, an employment skills plan, all of us have been producing those, it was then the question was, well, what is the outcome from that? What will the social regeneration be from your skills plan? So it's slightly changed around the, 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 the emphasis of how we go about our, our bid teams. And so they're always clamouring at my door, evidence, evidence, evidence. Where's the measurement for this? But the biggest point coming over from our bid teams was what is not clear is the level of detail our clients are looking for. Or if they understand how anyone can really measure social value. So if you're coming up with some answers on that, some consistency, it would be absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm sure I can work very closely with you on this because... Um, parallel to the Lord Young Review, in November and December, a group of associate members of the Considerate Constructors Scheme came together to say, look, you know, we, we obviously have an issue going through this review. How do we, can we use a Considerate Constructors Scheme as some kind of checklist, a consistency, that we could all work to and have at least a, a benchmark third party audited? So um, we got together with, with um, a, a, also two or three of the, um, the client partnerships of the Considerate Constructor Scheme, and we came up with a, 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 a draft checklist, and we circulated this around nine construction sites. This was in January and February this year. So Morgan Sindel provided five sites, and we provided four sites. And the, the specially trained monitors went round to each of these projects with a list of questions in the social, environmental and economic. Um, the next slide you probably can't read, doesn't matter, because it's still in draft. Uh, but what we did, we went around and um, of, of the six economic questions, five social and five um, environmental, and it was questions like, uh, what proportion of everybody on site lives within the locality? Locality depended on what the client said, if it's 10 kilometres, 20 kilometres, 30 kilometres. Uh, questions like, um, uh, how many apprentices or work experience people have you taken on? And how many of those, what proportion, proportion are local? How many are, of, of your um, supply chain are SMEs? Uh, so this is just a draft, so please don't get terribly carried away with it, but we, we, some interesting results came out of that. In particular, the client side involved in this, in our discussions, that's what it looks like. The, the point was we wanted to make sure that before a project started, both the contractor and the client could sit down and say, what are the targets? What are we trying to do in here? So rather like some of the, 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 the projects have been uh, explaining already, 
yes, let's agree from the start, what is it? How many apprentices? What is local? And then once that's agreed, halfway through the project, consider a constructive scheme will come along and say, how are you performing? Are you ahead of the game? Are you behind the game? At the end of the project, you end up with a final assessment, a measurement. Now, uh, at the end of this month, this is going to, I think it's 30 or 40, um, consider a constructive scheme client partners. Because the client partners are particularly excited because they can have a template specifically for construction. So that's uh, something I'm, I'm quite excited about. And I hope it can somehow work alongside yours so we're not duplicating or have proliferating another measurement system. Because it should be, I think it's important they should be the same. Come to Kia, which I've bound to do as a sponsor. Um, we haven't been idle at this either. Um, the last year we've been working very closely uh, in, in a lot of detail on a brand new strategy for a sustainable business allied to Vision 2020, which is our, our business strategy to, to grow twice the size in five years. So from three billion to six billion, we can't do that without a proper sustainability strategy. Um, we started off last June with a, a whole load of our major clients, shareholders, NGOs and employees and said, what is it? Let's start from scratch. What is it about sustainability and about social value that you think we ought to be doing as a major contractor? And about 15 uh, uh, clients and shareholders sat around the table. From that last June, we then worked very hard on this strategy. Um, we've come out with 20 core uh, uh, targets and KPIs under social, environmental, economic and governance. So there's 20 in total. In uh, March this year, uh, we then brought together a whole range of different clients both public sector, private sector, central government. So we've got the Department of Energy, sorry, the Department of Education, uh, Department of Health through Procure 21, local authorities, Northampton, uh, Staffordshire, and I've got some friends in the audience here who attended this, uh, Watford Borough Council, and then some of the major um, uh, housing association people, Genesis and Granger, but also we had our own um, uh, shareholders, Aberdeen uh, Asset <coughs> Management, and our NGO Macmillan Cancer Support, and basically went through all these different things. And what is it? What is it important to you? Not in terms of just what's important, but also what is your expectation of us being able to deliver that using our new strategy? And we went through a. Uh, I've got some nice pictures here actually to show it. Really, real people. I invited them into my lounge, um, <laughs> and. Uh, we, we actually fought through all, all these areas. We had to do like a, a, a voting system or a grading of what was important to them. We only had four matrices. Uh, what is really important, and we really think you can deliver, and what is not really important, and you can't deliver it anyway. But they could only put five in each box. So what we were interested in was what was really important to them, but they didn't think we could deliver. And that came out some interesting statistics. So, um, I, this is the results. We're still, because it's only in March, we're still working on it. Um, but and it has altered a few of our, of our um, areas in, in here. But all the way through this strategy is social value. But two in particular of the 20 um, actually specifically refer to the Social Value Act. Um, and they are targets. Um, whether they're achievable or not, it's a five-year plan, but we want 10% of um, additional social value as a percentage of our um, revenue. So if we're turning over in five years' time six billion, that's a lot of money. We're still working on how we measure that. I showed you some earlier diagrams of, of how we get, get there. But the key thing is we're targeting local employment and supporting local supply chains, supporting good causes in our communities, um, and we add, try to add value to our communities through positive engagement and mitigating negative uh, uh, impacts that we have as part of the business. So I'm a very firm believer that construction does deliver social value. Thank you.